In the tapestry of early Christian history, the concept of martyrdom emerges as a poignant testament to faith and resilience. Martyrdom, the act of bearing witness to one's faith unto death, was not merely a tragic end, but a triumphant entry into eternal life. This profound expression of belief, where individuals stood resolute in the face of persecution, often at the cost of their lives, underscores the depth of their commitment to Christ. Among these luminous tales of faith and courage, the story of saints Perpetua and Felicity shine with a particular brilliance. These two women, bound by their unwavering faith, faced the ultimate trial in the early 3rd century within the Roman Empire, a time when Christianity was cradled in the shadow of hostility and suspicion. Saints Perpetua and Felicity, a noblewoman and her slave respectively, were ensnared by the Roman edict against Christians, yet their story transcends the anguish of their martyrdom. It's a narrative rich in themes of unity, sacrifice, and the indomitable spirit of the faithful. Their journey from arrest to their final moments in the arena, where they met death with serene dignity, offers a glimpse into the early Christian understanding of life, death, and the promise of resurrection. Their legacy, illuminated by Perpetua's own writings, stands as one of the earliest, most direct testimonies of Christian womanhood, piety, and maternal affection entwined with the heroic embrace of martyrdom. Reflecting on their story, one is reminded of Tertullian's profound assertion that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Their sacrifice, a vivid echo of Christ's own, served to fortify the faith of their contemporaries and kindle the flames of devotion in the hearts of generations to follow. In our modern age, where faith often meets with indifference or outright hostility, the story of Perpetua and Felicity challenges us. It invites us to ponder the depth of our convictions and the lengths to which we would go to uphold them. Their narrative does not stand in isolation. It weaves into the broader fabric of cultural and spiritual heroism that finds echoes across time and mediums. From the steadfastness of Frodo in The Lord of the Rings, enduring unimaginable trials to destroy the Ring of Power, to the courage of young Chihiro in the animated film Spirited Away, who braves the unknown to save her parents, these stories across cultures and epochs resonate with the timeless themes of sacrifice and perseverance. St. Perpetua and Felicity in their final moments mirrored the highest virtues these tales aspire to, embodying the essence of Christian martyrdom, a witness to the truth that love, underpinned by faith, conquers even death. As we delve into their story, let us carry forward the light of their example, exploring not only the historical context of their martyrdom, but the universal lessons of faith, courage, and the power of witness that continue to inspire and challenge us today. In the early third century, amidst the bustling trade and vibrant life of Carthage in North Africa, the seeds of a story destined to echo through the ages were sown. This was a period marked by the Roman Empire's fluctuating policies towards Christians, oscillating between tolerance and severe persecution. It was against this backdrop of uncertainty and danger that two women, distinct in social status yet united in faith, stepped into the annals of Christian martyrdom. Perpetua, a young noblewoman, found herself navigating the complexities of new motherhood alongside the transformative journey of faith. Her education and status could have afforded her a life of comfort and societal approval, yet her choice to embrace Christianity set her on a collisional path with the Roman authorities. As a catechumen, not yet baptized, Perpetua rep represented the vibrant, albeit precarious, growth of early Christianity, a faith attracting individuals across societal divides, compelling in its message of hope and redemption. Felicity, Felicity's story intertwines with Perpetua's, not as a footnote, but as a testament to the universal call of faith. As a slave and expecting mother, Felicity faced the dual vulnerabilities of her social position and her impending childbirth in prison. Her commitment to becoming a Christian in such circumstances highlights the profound appeal and strength of the Christian faith, capable of transcending social hierarchies and personal trials. Their shared path to martyrdom began in a world where Christians navigated the perilous waters between their allegiance to God 
and the capricious decrees of earthly rulers. The Roman Empire, with its pantheon of gods and imperial cult, viewed the exclusive worship practices of Christians as a threat to societal order and piety. This period of persecution sought not just to punish, but to uproot the growing Christian community, challenging the very foundation of their faith. Drawing parallels from history and literature, one can liken Perpetua and Felicity's courage to that of characters who stand firm in the face of oppressive powers, such as Katniss Everdeen from the Hunger Games series, who challenges a tyrannical government despite personal risk. Similarly, their story reflects a narrative of Esther from the Bible, who risks her life to save her people, embodying the strength found in faith and the power of individual action for the greater good. The early church fathers, such as Tertullian and Augustine, later reflected on the witness of martyrs like Perpetua and Felicity, seeing in their sacrifice a living testimony to the truth and power of the Christian faith. Augustine, in his sermons, would emphasize the transformative power of such witnesses, not only for the edification of believers, but as a beacon to those outside the faith. In the lives of Perpetua and Felicity, we find not merely victims of persecution, but champions of faith whose legacy challenges us to consider the depth of our convictions and the sacrifices we are willing to make for truth. Their story is a mosaic of faith, courage, and love, transcending the bounds of their time to inspire generations in the unceasing pursuit of virtue and fidelity to one's beliefs. In the vibrant yet tumultuous setting of Carthage, under the expansive yet often oppressive reach of the Roman Empire, the steadfastness of a small group of Christians would etch their names into the annals of history. Perpetua, Felicity, and their companions, bound together by their unwavering commitment to their faith, faced the ultimate test as they were arrested for their refusal to renounce Christianity. This act of defiance, in an era where conformity to the pagan rituals of the empire was not just expected but enforced, marked them for persecution. The Roman authorities viewed such steadfastness as a direct challenge to the societal order and the divine sanction of the empire itself. The choice to stand firm in their faith, fully aware of the dire consequences, was a profound exercise of free will and courage. It was not a decision made lightly. Early Christians, like Perpetua and Felicity, were well aware of Christ's teachings on persecution and martyrdom. In the Gospel of Matthew, Christ tells his followers, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This promise of eternal reward for earthly suffering was a source of strength for many early martyrs. Their arrest was not just a moment of trial, but also a declaration of their identity as Christians, an identity for which they were willing to suffer and even die. This narrative of choosing faith over safety, of valuing eternal truths over temporal well-being, finds echoes throughout history and culture. It's reminiscent of characters such as Maximus and Gladiator, who chooses honor and integrity over the corrupting allure of power, or the brave hobbits in the Lord of the Rings, who risk everything to save their world from darkness. These stories, while fictional, capture the essence of the human spirit capacity for sacrifice in pursuit of a higher good, a theme central to the story of Perpetua and Felicity. The Church Fathers, reflecting on such acts of martyrdom, saw in them a testament to the power of faith and the reality of the Resurrection. St. Ignatius of Antioch, himself a martyr, wrote in his letter to the Romans, I am the wheat of God, and let me be ground by the teeth of the wild beasts, that I may be, that I may be found the pure bread of Christ. This imagery of martyrdom as a participation in the death and resurrection of Christ highlights the transformative power of such witness. Perpetua and Felicity's arrest, therefore, was not merely a legal proceeding. It was a spiritual stand, a testament to their faith in Christ and his promises. The refusal to renounce their faith despite the risks served as a beacon of hope and a source of inspiration for generations of Christians to come. It challenges us to reflect on our convictions and the lengths to which we were willing to go to uphold them. Their story is a call to courage, a reminder of the cost of faith and the eternal rewards promised to those who are faithful unto death. 
Within the confining and oppressive walls of their prison, scenes perpetual and felicity alongside their companions were subjected to conditions that tested the limits of their physical and spiritual endurance. The darkness of their cell could not, however, overshadow the light of their faith, which burned all the more brightly amidst the trials they faced. Perpetua's ordeal was compounded by her role as a new mother, torn from the tender moments of nursing her infant son. The deprivation of freedom paled in comparison to the agony of being separated from her child, a suffering that pierced her heart more deeply than the prospect of martyrdom itself. Yet in this profound vulnerability, her faith did not waver. Instead, it became a source of strength, not only for herself, but for her companions in faith. Felicity's situation bore its own harrowing shadow of despair. Pregnant and imprisoned, she was haunted by the fear that her execution would be postponed until after her delivery, separating her from sharing the martyr's crown with her fellow believers. The anticipation of childbirth, typically a time of joy, was overshadowed by the grim specter of death that awaited her. Yet in this crucible, crucible of suffering, her resolve remained unshaken, supported by the prayers and solidarity of her imprisoned family and faith. Amid these trials, Perpetua emerged as a beacon of hope and strength. Her visions, divinely inspired and profoundly symbolic, served to fortify the spirits of her fellow captives. In one such vision, she saw herself ascending a ladder to heaven, an ascent fraught with danger, yet ultimately leading to paradise. This vision was not merely a personal revelation, but a shared source of consolation and encouragement, a tangible sign that their sufferings were known to God and that their martyrdom would lead to, to eternal glory. Perpetua's leadership and the spiritual insights she received can be likened to the role of prophets and leaders throughout history who have guided their people through times of trial. Like Moses leading the Israelites through the wilderness, Perpetua guided her fellow captives through the spiritual desert of their imprisonment. Her visions recalled the biblical prophet's experiences, serving as a direct communication from God, affirming his presence and promise of salvation in the midst of suffering. The courage and faith of Perpetua and Felicity in prison, the refusal to renounce their faith despite the challenges they faced, echo the timeless narratives of hope in the face of despair, light in the midst of darkness. Their story is a testament to the power of faith to transform suffering into a source of strength inspiring not only their contemporaries, but all who hear their story. In the darkness of their cell, they found the light of Christ, a light no prison could confine and no executioner could extinguish. Their legacy is a beacon of hope, reminding us that even in the darkest moments, faith can reveal the path to eternal life. The trial of Saints Perpetua and Felicity, along with their companions before the Roman authorities, marks a pivotal moment in their journey of faith and martyrdom. Standing before the temporal power of Rome, they were confronted with a choice that would seal their earthly fate. The Roman Empire, in its attempt to maintain unity and order, demanded conformity to its pantheon of gods, viewing the exclusive worship of the Christian God as a direct challenge to its authority and the stability of the state. The refusal to sacrifice to the Roman gods, therefore, was not merely a religious statement, but a political act perceived as defiance against the empire itself. Perpetua and Felicity, faced with the demand to renounce their faith and offer sacrifices to the Roman gods, chose instead to affirm their allegiance to Christ. This choice was made in the full knowledge of the consequences that awaited them, death by public spectacle in the arena. Their refusal to sacrifice their faith on the altar of Roman piety was a testament to their profound conviction that their ultimate loyalty belonged to God alone, beyond any earthly power. The significance of their choice cannot be overstated. It is a declaration that their faith was not a private or secondary aspect of their identity, but the core of their being. Transcending even the most primal bonds of maternal love and concern for their children. This decision reflects Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Matthew, where he states, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Their willingness to sacrifice their earthly lives and the opportunity to raise their children underscores the depth of their conviction that the promises of Christ are worth more than the world's transient joys and securities. This narrative of unwavering faith in the face of death finds echoes in various cultural expressions, where characters must choose between their deeply held beliefs and the pressing demands of external powers. 
Similar themes are explored in works like A Man for All Seasons, which portrays Sir Thomas More's steadfast refusal to portray his conscience even at the cost of his life, in the face of King Henry VIII's demands. The Church Fathers, reflecting on the testimony of martyrs like Perpetua and Felicity, saw in their sacrifice a living continuation, continuation of Christ's passion. St. Ignatius of Antioch, himself facing martyrdom, wrote of being the wheat of God that must be ground by the teeth of wild beasts to become purebred for Christ. This imagery captures the essence of martyrdom as a participation in the death and resurrection of Jesus, affirming the, affirming the belief that in death, Christians are born into eternal life. The trial and sentence of perpetual infelicity thus stand as a profound witness to the power of faith to inspire courage in the face of death. Their story challenges believers to consider the depth of their own convictions and the sacrifices they are prepared to make for the sake of the gospel. It is a reminder that the true measure of faith is found not in the absence of fear, but in the ability to choose love and loyalty to God above all else. The martyrdom of saints Perpetual and Felicity, along with their companions in the arena, is a story of profound faith and courage that has resonated through the ages. Their final moments were marked not by despair, but by an unwavering commitment to the faith they held dear, even in the face of death's cruel spectacle. The Roman arena, designed to showcase the power of the empire and the supposed fertility of defiance, instead became a stage for the triumph of faith and the power of God's grace in the lives of these brave women. Felicity's ordeal took a remarkable turn just days before their execution. Her concern about being unable to suffer martyrdom with her companions due to her pregnancy was a poignant reflection of her deep desire for unity with them and their ultimate witness to Christ. Miraculously, she gave birth prematurely, a testament to the belief in God's providence and the power of prayer among the early Christian community. This event allowed her to join Perpetua and the others in the arena, fulfilling her heartfelt desire to share in their fate. As they entered the arena, Perpetua and Felicity along with their companions, faced the terror of death with remarkable serenity and courage. Their demeanor was not of that of victims, but of victors, embracing martyrdom as a means of witnessing to the truth and power of their faith. They stood together, supporting one another, their eyes fixed not on the jeering crowds or the ferocious beasts, but on the promise of eternal life with Christ. This moment was a vivid enactment of Christ's words in the Gospel of John, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The Church Fathers and later Christian writers have seen in the martyrdom of Perpetua, Felicity, and their companions a source of inspiration and a model of faithfulness to God. St. Augustine, reflecting on their story, emphasized the transformative power of their witness, not only for those who watched them die, but for all who would hear their story in the years to come. Their martyrdom was not a defeat, but a victory, a powerful testament to the belief that death is not the end, but the doorway to eternal life. Their courage in the face of martyrdom echoes the valor of characters such as Jean Valjean in Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, who, though not facing martyrdom, displays remarkable courage and moral integrity in the face of personal sacrifice. It also resonates with the steadfastness of figures like Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings, who stands firm against overwhelming darkness, embodying the hope that light will prevail. The martyrdom of Perpetua and Felicity challenges us to reflect on the depth of our faith and the strength of our conviction. It invites us to consider what we are willing to endure for the sake of our beliefs and to recognize the power of faith to sustain us through the darkest trials. The story is a call to courage, a reminder that in Christ, even death is transformed into victory and suffering into the promise of eternal glory. The legacy of Saints Perpetual and Felicity is a testament to the enduring power of faith and the profound impact of personal witness. Their story, deeply embedded in the fabric of early Christianity, has inspired countless believers over the centuries to face trials and persecution with courage and steadfastness. The narrative of their martyrdom, marked by a fearless proclamation of their faith in the face of death, became a source of encouragement and a model of Christian virtue. It served as a vivid reminder of the teachings of Jesus Christ about the cost of discipleship and the promise of eternal life for those who are faithful. One of the most remarkable aspects of their legacy is the survival of Perpetua's diary, 
a first-hand account of her experiences leading up to her martyrdom. This document is not only significant as one of the earliest surviving writings by a Christian woman, but also provides a unique insight into the inner life of a martyr. Her reflections and visions offer a window into the early Christian understanding of suffering, sacrifice, and the hope of resurrection, making her writings a valuable resource for theological study and spiritual reflection. The Church honors St. Perpetua and Felicity on March 7th, their feast day, setting aside this day to remember their courage, their witness, and the ultimate sacrifice they made for their faith. This commemoration is not merely historical remembrance, but a living continuation of their testimony, inviting Christians to reflect on the depth of their own faith and the ways in which they are called to witness to Christ in their daily lives. The significance of their story in the Christian calendar transcends mere memory. It is a call to live out the values they embodied, faith, courage, and love in the face of adversity. Just as the church fathers like Augustine drew upon their example to instruct and inspire their contemporaries, so too does their story continue to resonate with believers today. It reminds us that the challenges and persecutions faced by Christians are not a departure from the gospel, but in many ways a reflection of its transformative power in the world. In the broader cultural landscape, the legacy of Perpetua and Felicity echoes in narratives that celebrate the strength of the human spirit and capacity for individuals to stand firm in their convictions against overwhelming odds. From historical figures like Joan of Arc, who led with faith and courage, the fictional characters like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, who becomes a symbol of resistance and hope. The themes of sacrifice and fidelity to one's beliefs are universally relevant. These stories, like that of Perpetua and Felicity, inspire us to consider the values we hold most dear and the price we are willing to pay for them. In commemorating Saints Perpetua and Felicity, the Church not only honors their memory, but also renews its commitment to the gospel message they died for, a message of hope redemption, and the promise of eternal life for those who, like the, these courageous women, remain faithful to the end. Their legacy is a beacon of light for all who seek to navigate the complexities of faith and fidelity in a changing world, reminding us that true victory is found not in the avoidance of suffering, but in the faithful witness to the love and power of God. The story of Saints Perpetua and Felicity, woven through with themes of courage, faith, and sacrifice, stands as a timeless testament to the power of conviction and the depth of spiritual resolve. Their journey from the security of their daily lives into the annals of martyrdom illuminates the path of discipleship, marked not by absence of fear, but by the presence of a faith so profound that even the prospect of death could not dim its light. Their courage, underpinned by a steadfast faith, enabled them to face the ultimate sacrifice with a serenity and conviction that continues to inspire. This narrative invites us to reflect on our own lives, on the challenges and convictions we face in our journey of faith. It prompts us to ask ourselves, what are the values and beliefs we hold dear enough to stand firm for in the face of adversity? How does the example of perpetual and felicity inspire us to live out our faith with greater courage and commitment? As we contemplate their story, let us engage in a conversation about the insights and reflections it provokes. I encourage you to share your thoughts and the ways in which the example of these two remarkable saints might influence how you face your own challenges and convictions. Their legacy is not just a historical account to be remembered. It is a living testimony that challenges us, even today, to live our faith with courage, to embrace sacrifice with hope, and to face our trials with the assurance of God's eternal promise. The enduring relevance of their story speaks to the universal quest for meaning, purpose, and identity in the face of life's trials. Just as the narratives of characters like Frodo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings, or Harry Potter in his eponymous series, embody themes of sacrifice and perseverance against overwhelming odds, so too does the story of Perpetua and Felicity remind us of the transformative power of faith and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to live by their convictions. In sharing and reflecting upon their story, we're invited into a deeper exploration of our own faith journey, inspired by their example to live with greater authenticity and bravery. Let us take this opportunity to reflect, to question, and to grow, emboldened by the legacy of Saints Perpetua and Felicity, whose light continues to shine across centuries, guiding us towards a more courageous and faithful expression of our own beliefs.
As we conclude our exploration of the courageous lives and enduring legacy of Saints Perpetua and Felicity, I invite you to engage farther with these stories of faith, courage, and sacrifice. If you found inspiration in the remarkable journey of these early Christian martyrs, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more content that delves into the lives of saints and martyrs, their trials, their triumphs, and profound lessons they offer to us today. Looking ahead, there is a wealth of stories yet to be told of other early Christian martyrs whose lives are marked by an unshakable faith in the face of persecution. A follow-up video or series might explore the narratives of figures such as St. Ignatius of Antioch, who embraced martyrdom with a spirit of joy, or St. Polycarp, whose final words before his execution became a testament to his lifelong devotion to Christ. These stories, and many others, provide a deeper understanding of faith under persecution, offering insights into the strength and resilience of the human spirit when anchored in a profound trust in God. Such narratives not only enrich our knowledge of Christian history, but also invite us to reflect on our own faith journey in today's world. They challenge us to consider what it means to live a life of conviction, to stand firm in our beliefs, and to witness the truth with courage and love. By exploring these themes, we continue the conversation on how the examples of saints and martyrs can influence and inspire our lives in meaningful ways. I encourage you to share your thoughts and insights on these stories. What do they teach us about facing challenges and adversities with faith? How do they inspire us to live our convictions more fully? Your engagement enriches this journey, and together we can draw closer to the heart of what it means to live a life of deep faith and commitment. Let us continue to explore, to learn, and to be inspired by the rich tapestry of saints who've gone before us, whose lives continue to illuminate our path today. Thank you for joining me today, and God bless.